playing with orchids. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. And thank you for being here. Thank you for clicking on this video. This is my Paphia Perlum Lindley Kuperwitz. And I want to dust the leaves off before I get to repotting her. Because once water gets on the leaves, should water get on the leaves? Water shouldn't get on the leaves, but you know, repots are a little bit, you know, wet. <laughs> then the dust will probably be harder to get off. So I use my makeup brush and dust the orchid off. Seeing as she's a fuzzy one all around. And then, no, I do not use the makeup brush on me. It is exclusive for my fuzzy slipper orchids. This orchid is beautiful, growing well, and I am not disturbed by the yellowing of the leaves. They are all on old fans and we'll probably be taking them off during the repot. The last time I potted her into this pot was in 2020 and she has all the signs and hallmarks of actually needing a repot because she's lifting herself out of the pot. I'm glad I can get to it now. She has been soaking in water only because giving her anything like <laughs> even what I thought was weak calcium magnesium caused this leaf to burn. So water only for this one. But yeah, I don't think we should have too much of an issue with this one. Famous last words. Been using microfiber to protect the surface roots right here. Classic sign, this orchid needs to be repotted. Those roots shouldn't be at the surface. But they do what they do with strong roots and they lift themselves out of the pot. I did a video about the signs when you should check if you're growing in not clear pots. When you should see what you should see when you need to repot your slipper orchids. Oh, you guys. Oh, look at this. Oh, let me, I have to stop. I have to show you. Just on that little motion there, look at this. Isn't that a pretty sight? Look at these root tips. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. Now I have two in here. I know that, but I don't want to separate them. I want to get them back in the same pot because space is an issue indoors. So they will be staying together. The plan here is not to separate them. The plan here is to clean up while we're at it. Even though the leaves haven't been absorbed, we might as well do a cleanup check for pests. Uh, lucky that is bird poop. <laughs> Because this one does attract mealybugs. Oh, we can have three in here. Oh, wow. Okay. Huh. All right. I'm not complaining, but I didn't want them to actually separate because it will make the repot so much more difficult. Hmm. Live root. Dead roots on a dead fan. That's not concerning at all. That's easily dealt with. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. what to do? Thank you. That was easy. I appreciate that. Anything that comes my way is very, very welcome. Now, let's check if we can or should. Funny though that the fan has died off, but this root is still firm. So we're going to leave that. But I have another fan here. That's going to be going pretty, pretty soon. Very tempting to go in there because this fan is already growing its next fan. Hmm. i got to be careful. Just because I don't want to be cracking the roots. They are fuzzy, but they're not pliable. That's why they can lift themselves out of the pot. So, nope, there's great roots attached here. So I'm going to leave it, but I'm going to take the leaf, everything off in the back and just maintain these nice roots. So we won't be sacrificing them at all. Clean my hands. Let's get this a little bit cleaned up back here just to make sure, just to double check. All right. And maybe something else eventually growing out in the back. We'll leave it. Okay, now I have a dead root right here. 
just like with any other orchid root, they do have a spongy kind of texture to them. And then the steely is inside, and when they're hollow like that, they're dead and easily removed at the base. Everything that goes on the floor behind me <laughs> is fair game for king. There we can get some of those dry bracts off. And there we find our first little mealy bugs. So, while we're at it, we paint with garlic alcohol. This orchid tried to bloom for me earlier in the season, but I had the thrips issue, so the bloom didn't last very long. It was also small and stunted, and it just kind of collapsed within 24 hours. Okay, here's a root growing, lower leaf, on a second to old fan. I would like to release that when we get rid of that. Simples. There's another leaf back there, but these roots are firm. Isn't that amazing? Love it. I don't see my slipper orchids very often. Seeing as I'm growing inorganically, I don't have to repot at all. Another leaf. I like how easily they're coming off. And despite confirming that was bird poop, be 100% sure, we'll clean that up. My grandma always said, assuming is not knowing. <laughs> okay, do you know what? We have some remnants of an old root right here. This is turning out to be perfect. Quick vid style. I just want to make sure that I see the lecker ratio, what I've got in here, because that is all I'm going to do with this orchid. <laughs> Gotta love it. Yeah, the LECA ratio in here is mixed. So I will be repeating that, but I could fiddle her back into the small pot of 18 centimeters, but I'm gonna give her a big pot, huge pot of 21 centimeters. Bring on the slipper orchid beast. Right, you know what? Let's not mess around. Let's get her potted up. I love it. This lecker is going to be so easy to clean. Now, I could just reuse all of this, but I have clean, fresh lecker, not, you know, no debris in it, no dust and stuff. You can see that their water is somewhat dirty over there, pooling. We'll give her a nice, fresh lecker to get her off to a great start for the next two, maybe four years. That'll all depend on her, and if she is growing well, I don't bother with it. Okay, I have surrounded myself with my paraphernalia because <laughs> the evolution of the third arm has not quite been established just yet, but I bet you if that were to ever happen, orchid growers would be the first <laughs> to show signs of a third arm. Now, let's get you just centered. I don't even mind the direction of the fans. But well, what I do want is her nice and low in the pot to begin with. There we go. And we're going to start with large leka at the base. And here I can be generous with my pouring because of all the gaps. Orchids. During the course of years and years in a pot, especially with inorganic media, they lift themselves out of the pot. My intention now is not to lift her up high so that she reaches the base of the pot and the rim as such, but only to such a level that as she grows and continues to lift herself out of the pot, I can just keep adding more lecker around the base, buying myself more years in the same pot. So the idea is not, you know, not as high as flush with the rim of the pot, just a tad. Ah. 
I would really appreciate it if that little root tip would make it. It looks to me like maybe it's already stopped growing. We'll give it a shot and see what it does. The base of slipper orchids should also be a little bit lower in the media as opposed to too high so that the roots can get into the media straight away so that they don't fail. However, the base of a slipper orchid can also rot out very, very easily. So there's a fine balance, which I'm trying to achieve here now. Also covering the roots that were previously exposed, which is easy, except look, I still have a root tip right there and a few poking around at the surface. Ha! Y'all are stubborn! So the root that was previously at the surface covered by microfiber now is at least surrounded by Lekka. Don't want to get too close there. Eventually the orchid will settle herself into the pot and the Lekka will do its thing and move with the orchid. So what I'm doing now is just making sure that the bases of the fans are somewhat covered, but not too much. So my little Lekka beads are just going to be, you know, pyramided around the bases, not necessarily touching. Pyramided around the bases. Now there's a new word for you. <laughs> but whatever works, right? And you see that? The base of the fan. There we go, there's a Lekka bead close up, but not really touching. That is the plan of this exercise. And still that root is poking out at the surface. It's fine in the pot. It is fine in the pot, so we'll just leave that. And it's not a branching root system. It's not like I'm gonna be seeing anything poking out going aerial. That is not the characteristic of these roots. Just me being fussy now. But there we go. So she looks low, she looks sunken in, but that is exactly how I want her. Now, I'm going to do a status check because it's a bit difficult to get the camera in because she's low in the pot. I'm gonna take some images and I'll show you what I've been talking about. Oh, that's so pretty with the sun on the foliage now. Only plain RO water filling up the reservoir. That is so pretty with the sun. Oh, anyway, all the fans are in position. All the roots have been somewhat covered up. The one that you see still sticking out without any fuzziness on it. That is from where it was covered by a microfiber. And when I lifted the microfiber, I tore some of the fuzz off. That was back in the day. The root is fine, it survived without fuzz. But oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? And you can see just how low I have her in the pot. I have at least six to seven centimeters around the rim, intentionally, because once again, bring on the next four years and then we can see what she does. And I hope that she's gonna be happy and you can see that gorgeous light breeze that's going to help out with whatever water may have gotten into the base of the fans. Make sure there's no water on the leaves while she's enjoying a little bit of late afternoon Spanish sun. Ah, <sighs> my goodness, those close-up shots when I was taking the images, seeing all the markings and the spottings of the leaves at the base of the fans. Oh, they are gorgeous, gorgeous. It was a quick repot for which I am very grateful, I have to say. I can imagine worse things. It doesn't always have to be a disaster. So I'm grateful that she has been doing superbly in the last two years. No more thrips attacks, please. That would be awesome because the blooms on this orchid smell like raspberry sorbet. Absolutely delicious. I've only ever achieved one bloom per fan. I didn't actually have two blooms, but she should be blooming on two fans. And I hope that will be the next go around. I'm babbling. I'm just enjoying oh, the sun on the leaves. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't mean to waste your time. If you've watched to the end, I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much. If you have any questions, of course, please bring them to my attention in the comments. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.